Okay, before we start, I should give a little context. I have a bet going on with a friend who's planning on leaving Warframe, starting a family, because his priorities are completely screwed up, and he wanted to know if a certain style of play was possible. The initial challenge was to get to Mastery Rank 25 without using any former. Now, when I got to Mastery Rank 25, the game had already made 26 available, thank you Fortuna, which meant that we had a little conversation and th figured that we could extend that challenge, because why not? Now, I mainly took this on for the challenge, but there's a little you know, incentive, because he's leaving and he wants to give all his stuff away to his clanmates and me because I'm begging to, you know, have shiny things. But mainly in it for the challenge, because, I don't know, this is a free-to-play game. I like torturing myself. So, the point of this video is to be more of an archive, more of a snapshot of what my game was like when I reached... MR26, which is the new goal. Difference being, I added in extra modifiers that aren't in the bet, because, once again, I'm a glutton for punishment. So, I not only needed a Mastery Rank 26, I figured I might as well go all the way and have all equipment maxed, and because I am stupid, and this would have been done a lot quicker if I hadn't done this, have all of the equipment available at once, so that's a lot of slots. Then additional things like having all the achievements done, which, considering bug frame, there are two that are bugged, Steam says I have them, I know I got them, in-game says I don't have them, they're known bugs, whatever. And no real money spent, because it would be a lot easier to get through this if I could just throw money at the screen. Money I don't have, but, you know, it's not really a fair time comparison if I buy my way to the end. And honestly, playing this game, that would have cost a lot of money just to skip things I could do by simply waiting around. For fair time representation, I also added on two other things. So I bought no items with plat that you can get otherwise. So I didn't buy any frames, I didn't buy any weapons, and I didn't use that plat for rushing things in the foundry either. I was sorely tempted near the end because of this person on the screen being a nightmare to grind for, and I suggest anybody who actually wants her to just buy her because normal Sanctuary Onslaught is not worth playing. So I wanted to, gr to rush her, but whatever. So I started playing the 28th of July and ended the 12th of December. So that's four months, 14 days. So 137 days because I finished yesterday. As far as I can tell, I have signed in every single day, which is why we have the 139 on, on screen. That discrepancy will be explained later. So, that's about it. Let's accept this. Tenno, a new alert has been. Yeah. It will be marked on navigation. Now, this bit's going to be quite boring. I'm going to put a link in the description to when I am actually going to end this challenge, so I'm going to use my first former. Right now, I'm just going to go through anything I can think of, of my game as is, as an archive, because then I can look back and go, oh yeah, I didn't have that by this point, etc. Oh, prime time tonight. Um, I really hope Red Text doesn't screw this recording. So, yeah, skip to that if you don't want to see this boring, almost admin-y stuff. So, first I'm going to go on my profile. Bit of fashion frame. I spend way too many ducats on Barrow when I shouldn't, because, you know, weapons more important. So, 
to equipment. That's sort by progress. And I'm going to somehow very s slowly scroll through the entirety of this. Once again, for posterity, I suppose. This video really isn't meant to be bragging. It's probably going to come off as it anyway. But I really hope it doesn't. I want some kind of... I feel some kind of pride for this. I mean, this is four and a half months of commitment to something I did on a whim because somebody asked me to. And I enjoyed myself, don't get me wrong. This isn't exactly... <laughs> this isn't exactly not fun. This is probably one of my favourite games and probably one of the only free-to-play games I've actually ever enjoyed, mainly because pay-to-win doesn't really exist. Unless you're talking about ribbons, but who actually s bothers with ribbons? Coming from somebody who cannot use former, a lot of this game is just using your mods correctly. You do not need ribbons. You do not need a full mod page, even. You just need to adapt. Change your mods out every now and again. So, there we go. There are five missing pieces of equipment. Now, it says there's three, but they are missing the... These three are the login rewards, obviously. I'm not getting those anytime soon, and if I waited to get them, it's not really going to be a fair time comparison of this entire challenge. The other two are the anniversary weapons. I was not playing when the anniversary happened, which is March, I believe. So, no anniversary weapons for me. Of course, the Dex Furious is here. If I just scroll all the way up here. So you might be wondering how I have that. Honestly, this account is from 2014. A long time ago, somebody did try and get me into this game. Warframe back then was not fun. I did not enjoy my time with it. They did some pretty good marketing to get me back into it, and I'm glad they did, because the game is completely different, a lot of it for the better. So, that one explains that one day discrepancy. New alert marked on navigation, Tenno. Shut up, Reb. That one day discrepancy from my d days played, obviously there are two days that don't come into it, but obviously one of those days is today, and I finished my equipment last night. So, 137 days for the challenge, 139 days overall, because I must have played one day way back when, where well, I didn't even manage to get an achievement, somehow. I must have been so disinterested, or maybe, honestly, my computer was probably terrible back then. I probably just went, oh, I can't run this, I'll go back to playing Fallout 2 or something. I'd say Dwarf Fortress, but that's so CPU intensive it would probably melt whatever I had in 2014. So, Dex Furious. Carried me a lot in early game. Was quite fun. I also had a Breton with a Catalyst in it for some reason. Or Reactor, I forget which one's which. And used the Heat Sword, of course. So, let's just go on usage of each one, of each category. So, Rhino for general usage or index. Trinity because I came in when that was the big thing. And, you know, it's quite nice to just go, oh look, there's an ox, and just use your one on him. And yeah, you can't kill him, but he is completely stunlocked. Equinox is probably my new favourite frame. I love maiming things. I love the synergy it has with teammates. So they damage things, it boosts my maim, I then nuke everything. I'm not a big Glimbo player. The only reason that's there is because he is perfect for syndicate missions, or any kind of, you know, void runs for loot, anything like that. Planes of Eidolon slash or Ballas and Spy slash Conservation. 
you used to be my favourite, but you can't, like, you, both of you nuke, but you're better at it. I'll probably get back to you once I form it, because, um, what's your three? I can't remember the thing, the same thing Helios is Syndicate Augment has. Syndicate mod, where it um, makes weak points appear on everybody. That'll probably be fun once I can actually make a build format for that. Oh boy, you are brilliant for getting focus early on, especially because all my weapons aren't that great without former. I should actually point uh, touch on that. One of the best things about playing this game without former is it really makes you appreciate certain weapons differently. Like, I use the Archiplasma a lot, but the Archiplasma has no polarities. That really limits how pol powerful it can be. Or at least I'm pretty sure it has no polarities. I use the Ignis Wraith. Similar problem, but basically these weapons are very good for getting any kind of focus. Tigris because I played a lot of Index, because I need a lot of money, because I need to make a lot of things. I love you. You're just amazing. Uh, yeah, I think I'm about done here. That is amazing. I love this. This can forever stay. Sorry about that. Obviously, I said the Dex Furious carried me a lot through the early game. It was quite nice to literally leave, or start on Earth with the Dex Furious. It's not the best weapon, but, and I ran out of ammo quite a lot, but it's quite fun. Honestly, it says I've used the Atomos a lot. That was only used during Plague Star. All those 17,000 kills, because I wanted as much former as possible, because I wanted all those weapons out of the dojo as soon as possible. Yeah, should have been more clear about that. I can't use former to um, for polarities, but I can use it to craft things, because otherwise that would be a stupid restriction. You're broken, and the only reason I use you is because you're broken. Ditto. I used you to open up um, stuff in the void in the timed puzzles before I had Limbo and his amazing nuke capabilities. And you're just broken. Any condition overload build. Oh, the Glaive. Glaive Prime especially. Just shoot this at them, then headshot them with the Glaive Prime. And millions of damage. This. Obviously, why would you not use the Galatine? I was surprised I loved this so much. As soon as I noticed the crit multiple, Even though it's got terrible crit chance, once I noticed the crit multiplier, perfect. Um weapon for maiming strike. Actually, touching on the, on the Acolytes, I managed to, me and a friend managed to get all of the mods on our first time with the Acolytes and we didn't even have access to half the star chart. That was a wild ride, just sitting there waiting for them to show up. I'm so glad I did because maiming strike is perfect, Argon sc scope is really nice. That's the free one you get with the code. Much better than the normal Skarna, so it carried me quite a few, quite a bit. And this thing is amazing. This has a lot of usage, but no kills, because I just used it with Limbo. Because I figured, oh, I might as well break crates that he somehow didn't nuke. But then if I wanted to actually use a whip that could kill things, I'd use this. And I love the Skoliak. These two are amazing early game at least. I used them so much. Uh, fast dagger, fastest dagger for fast assassinations unless you count Zors. That thing's great with its augment because you'll backstab somebody and it'll explode and then it'll, that backstab damage will then kill everybody else around. Well, the enemy's health will kill whatever. Not the damage, the enemy's health percentage blah. I'm getting that mod up just to sound like I know stuff because I don't. 
Oh look, everybody uses Helios. The surprise. You is you would probably be my most used, honestly. I mean, you're close. I mean, Helios is only up there because scanning is a necessity. Didn't get another Sentinel for quite a long time. And who puts weapons on Sentinels? I don't want them aggroing things and dying. Although once they got the rev revive mod, it became less of an issue. I'm gonna say they still die quite a lot, even taking that aggro away. Who uses pets? Although Fortuna changed that because fetch is now a thing. Although I still use my smeter, and Helminth is nice for a bit of crowd control, but who uses the other ones? Hopefully, a lot of people now. Except Chaser, I'm pretty sure his entire point is completely broken by fetch existing. Because his only other thing that he can do is bring you health orbs when you're down. Except he doesn't do that. Ever. I only know about that because I read it on the wiki. I've never seen it happen. And gathering plants, but he only does that out of combat. And At what point are you out of combat in this game? Like, even in... Um, Spy missions, when you're trying to avoid combat, you're still in combat. He won't gather things. So, here's hoping he gets reworked. It's L. There's not much that needs to be said about that. Teleporting is too broken. I want all my Cetus Wisps in two minutes. Uh, use the Imperator a lot, because why would you make any of the arc? wing weapons, until I did and realised the Fluctus was amazing and the Vandal is even better. I like the Vandal better, I think. People like the Grappler, I don't. I don't like the range limit, I don't like the potential to kill myself, even though it's not that strong. Hopefully, with Fortuna Part 2 coming, that will be changed, because we'll be able to walk around with it. And I imagine the Grappler is going to be broken, considering there's the... Is the Tusk Heavy Gunner has the Grattler, and yes, yeah, I don't like her at all. Why would you make any Arc Melees? Except you do, because the Nux is amazing, and the Centaur was even better when I got my hands on that. Amps. For the longest time, I didn't even make an amp. I really don't like Eidolons, but we'll get into that. Okay, so that's the long, boring one just touch on here. Tenno, there's a time-limited mission alert available. Check navigation. Never a quiet moment. So, just touch on a few things here. I wish operations were replayable. Especially for the story. There's a lot I've read on the wiki that obviously other people have already know because they did the events, but like, Alad V's story goes all over the place if you go through it on the star chart. But there's a lot more context if you actually did some of his events. I have no idea how accurate that time played is. I think that's only in-game time, but I don't know if that counts, you know, just sitting around in the dojo, because, you know, there's a lot of... Tra when you do not use money to buy plats, you do a lot of trading sell a lot of mods. Don't really sell prime parts, they're ducats. Just turn them into gold. Uh, the income is also not useful because it doesn't count the index. I had a three day credit booster. I got a hundred thousand credits. A uh, hundred million credits, sorry. Those are not, those weren't a fun three days. And now I'm down to two, because Fortuna kept eating my credits. I'm glad I did it, but I'm still not sure if it was worth it. I don't I don't think I can even touch Index now, because it's just... It's killed it for me. Um, mission quit. I'm pretty sure <laughs> the only reason I have that many mission quits is because I keep accidentally going into Syndicate missions without setting it to solo, because... I want my medallions, and people don't want medallions for some reason, and I'm very good at finding medallions, but I need time to do that. 
I don't want people to rush to the end, unless it's defense or interception. Although sometimes they have medallions because reasons. Um, just still slowly scrolling down. Grenier boss kills. That's only because of killing Let Krill and Vor over and over again for Oricon cells. And see, I've done a few Eidolons, but honestly, ah, that's probably one of the bits of the game I least enjoy. There's the time limits the nature of it means that people really, really get involved. Any mistake is just heavily punished. Hell, a lot of people won't even take you in the party unless you have blah many kills and captures. It's kind of elitist. I, it is not a very enjoyable part of the game. I hope Fortuna Part 2 comes around and allows us to get arcanes in a different way because I really, really hope I don't have to do Eidolons. They're just not fun. Take the time limited bit off of it, maybe it'll, there'll be an attitude change. Uh, weapon accuracy. Well, my most used primary weapon is the Ignis Wraith, a weapon that doesn't have accuracy, so it just always puts you at zero if it's the only weapon you've used. If that's how that's calculated. Otherwise, at least I hit one in four shots. Nobody plays Conclave, so I can't get any stats. Ditto with Lenaro. I revive people. A lot of people don't for some reason. Especially when you go into Operator, turn invisible, invulnerable. There doesn't seem to be a downside unless the objective is under threat. Just slow scroll down here. I say slow, but I don't want to take I don't want it to take too long. A lot of this was manual scanning because I never bothered to make Helios until much later on. My first priority was just getting the Syndicate, the, the Samara scanner. All that frost leaf. I wish there was more obstacle stuff. Like this game has such a good parkour system. I I wish I wish there was a, a some kind of parkour timing thing. I had a lot of fun in the one in the dojo, and happy Zephyr because memes. Who knows? Syndicate. I'm pretty sure all of these are the highest except for. These three here, because they're the opposites of what I level. Conclave, because reasons already discussed. And the Quills, because Eidolons. Pain, although that is probably going to be my next goal. I'll probably just do the normal Terror List over and over again. Because at least there's, a, there's less attitude when you just play against a normal Terror List. Okay, now we get to the explanation a bit. Sort by progress. Here are a lot of challenges or achievements. And I have every single one except for polarize this, polarize that, the four mastery ranks that aren't unlocked, and two bugged achievements. One, I have all of those on the cave, on the map. I have them all. I got them probably the first day. I just got them in somebody else's multiplayer game, which apparently is the reason for that bug. And it says it's fixed, but I can't get it to trigger. And do you know how long this took to get? Like, it's very hard to put a million meters into context. But imagine doing that, doing a, I don't know, 10, 11 hour run just doing conservation because I finally got the Kubradon unlocked. All of that. Doing fishing. All of that. 
and then the game crashes. So I have a Steam achievement, but a challenge that says I don't have it. So let's hope this actually gets this up. I'm just going to alt tab quickly to check that it is. It is not. Huh. Well, my Steam profile is public, so you can go look at it if you want. When did I unlock those two? Uh, Valis Spelunker, 10th of November at 9.45pm. And K-Driven, 30th of November at 9.15pm. Actually, while I'm here, I'll give some context. My first achievement is Secrets of the Oricon, which is getting it a mod. 28th of July, 9.30pm. So, that is when I officially started playing. The account might be from 2014, but either they didn't have achievements back then, or well, I obviously didn't make any progress. I had no nodes um, complete on Earth. And latest achievement is This Is What You Are, which is completing a, fo a focus tree, 5th of December, 8.32pm. That is because I massively misread what the achievement meant. I thought it meant complete an entire tree. I didn't think it meant unlock all the nodes. That's significantly easier. That's just 50,000 focus for each one, not like the million it costs to un lock certain nodes to unbound, unbind them. But after this video is up, polarize this and polarize that will be completed. So that will be nice. Point is, they're not unlocked here or on the Steam achievements. You two need to get fixed, pronto. And here is my wish list, not because I'm asking for something, but because it's nice to look at things I can now buy because I'm not saving plat to buy vaulted prime pieces off people that really want a lot more than I'm willing to give them. But I eventually scummed my way through it. So this was the big long bit, because the profile is a lot of information that I wanted to make sure I captured. I mean quick fire now, so mods, sorted by rank, slowly scroll, do I have motion blur turned on, or am I, or am I too tired? really interesting here, just for posterity again. It wasn't part of the initial challenge, but I really wanted to get as many mods as I could. I, I, I like collecting things from my heart, so game designers always exploit me for that. And I got quite a few prime mods even though that wasn't necessary for the challenge either. Missing a few because Barrow never gives them, he just wants to give cosmetics. So very quickly give you the context of what I'm missing. I am missing two mods from Apothex, which are Empowered Blades and I think it's a Silver mod. Stand United. Five Arbitration. So, Adaption, Power Donation, Rolling Guard, Vigorous Swap. There's a fifth one somewhere. Cautious Shot. Eight Conclave. I'm not going to go find those. They're all boring. I'm not playing Conclave, so the only way to get them is from um, sentinel drops and the, trying to get a sentinel to spawn is hard enough. I mean, there are the actual conclave mods, but I wasn't talking about those. Oh wait, there, there's the conclave mods that I have. Um, three idle on mods, 
as in mods dropped from Eidolons. Once again, if Fortuna Part 2 allows me to get Arcanes, then I... I just won't. I'll just buy these with Plat, because it's not worth it. Don't know why I'm taking the time to actually go and find them. Fanged Fusilar. Fusilar, I'd probably butchered that. Sweeping Serration. And another one that's Impact, but I can't remember where it is, what it's called. on screen and I'm just blind. Collision Force. I cannot see it, but I know what it is. Because I have a handy dandy Oh, there it is. I really am blind. Uh, two peculiar mods, because I haven't really played a lot of Elite Sanctuary, because I had to play Normal Sanctuary to get Cora, who was not worth it. Kinetic Diversion! Because... No, I'm not grinding for that. And I'm not buying it either. People vastly inflate the price of that just because it's hard to grind for. It's not even hard to grind for, it's just nobody grinds it. I suppose that is supply and demand, but I'd rather just get it myself. And tons of Syndicate mods, as you can see. That's the only stuff left. Uh, of particular note, Reawaken. The three Transmute cores, and Astral Autopsy, which I have. I just sell it uh, quite often because people buy it. It's a nice source of plat. Okay. Ooh, actually, let's get onto a proper grind you should not do ever. Here are my landing crafts. I ground for every single one of them, including this thing. Just buy it. Do not torture yourself with sabotage missions like I did. For exceedingly low percentage drops. Which I eventually got, but it's just not worth it. No. Just just sell some mods, get the plat, buy it from this menu. Don't listen to my own restrictions, just just buy it. It's easier. Um very quickly, I have fifty three former just sitting there unused. It is going to be such a rush when I am able to use those. Quick look at the arcanes. Haven't got many, obviously. Another awful. The Exodias, Magus or Magus, whatever. The two packs. I haven't even got much use out of these. I just wanted them because they're limited. And DE knows that. They know how to hook me in. This entire game speaks to me. That's why I accepted this stupid challenge in the first place. Uh, pretty pets. Uh, here's my Hail Nymph, which is my last leveled up one. Oh, keep in mind that at the time of this video, this is when the pets looked ugly. I'm not sure if they're ever going to get fixed, but there's something with the lighting engine. So, obviously these also aren't going to be the base colours, but I tend to keep rare colours visible if I have them. So, Aoife, Aurelia, Love My Smeeter, Skinny Boy, Lucky, Maria. I had such bad luck trying to get in the Daza. Nine Smeeters in a row. Naomi, Big Bulky, Sahasa, and Xanth. Mm -hmm. 
So, now it's time to get to the actual main event. So, just as a tiny proof, um, I do not, I have not bought her with plat, otherwise she would have a reactor on her. Everybody's going to have reactors now, because that plat can actually go somewhere. Honestly, this took the longest time because of grinding for her. She, I did three days straight, and not even the, the more casual runs beforehand of just trying to get focus out of the, uh, the sanctuary. Her drop rate is stupid. I had, I got relics that have the same drop rate as the systems and the blueprint multiple times in the same just so many relics and no no Cora pieces I mean it's a bit like uh, it's gonna be like uh, the planes as soon as you have revenant pieces he will never, ever stop showing up in your rewards, and you will hate him. I have Tenno, so many new alerts. has begun. It will be marked on navigation. Shush. There are so many revenant neuroptics that I don't want. <sighs> Obviously, I have the vandals, so I've done a little time in ESO, but not enough to get up, get the peculiar mods somehow. So, I guess RNG and luck are just kind of double-edged swords. And if you've gotten this far in the video, and honestly, Chimera update was a while ago, I imagine most people have seen it, but for, for people who haven't, this is a sword from the prologue. It is a spoiler. I'm not going to talk about it, apart from the fact it doesn't say max rank, it says rank 30. Reason being, it needs former to go up. So I thought... That would be a perfect excuse to use my first former. So, to just go through, I'm going to sort by form account. As you can see, the entire thing is alphabetical, which means that there is no former used. I'm going to slowly go down, so you can see that everybody is here, and everybody is maxed, including the ones that I almost sold that can't be gotten back, like, um, they'll show up eventually, or I'm blind. Well, I know Chroma is, um, Limbo and Mirage. Uh, I really need those slots, but I'm so glad I didn't sell them, because I'm not, I'm not buying fr frames for Plat. No, 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 no. Once again, sort by form accounts. Nothing here. Very slowly show that I have everything. Every piece of equipment. Ditto with the Lato Vandal. Uh, sidearms, pistols, whatever the category is. Sorry if Cora's animation is making you dizzy. Melee is probably going to be the longest one, because there are just so many melee weapons in this game, and only a handful of good ones. Melee 3.0 better not disappoint. So, no former used at the top. I think I have everything. I've double, tripled, quadruple checked. The only thing I was missing that doesn't appear at the bottom as a kind of buy plat thing was the Ignis, because I sold that ages ago. It was the only one I was missing and had to rebuy. Because I thought, oh, I have the Wraith. Why would I need the normal one? Except they're kind of different weapons. The Ignis Wraith is more of a crit weapon. 
whereas the Ignis is more of a status. Um, let's just go on focus quickly. Yeah, I picked Madurai to start with, when I didn't know what I was doing. Then I bit, did a bit of Nariman. A bit of Nariman. And then I finally found Xenaric. I finally figured out how to actually get that achievement. But... Yeah, I did. I got a lot. I mean, I maxed out Energizing Dash, even though I was about MR23 when that happened. So I missed a lot of the time it could have been useful, but... I'm glad I got it, and it does help quite a lot. I'm not looking forward to this, but... I want that flying Eidolon in, um... Or Valis. Maybe that'll be more fun. The day-night cold heat cycle in Old Valis is a lot shorter, so... Hopefully less of the community torture. Pretty little kitty. Angry little doggo who's shy. And I'll just show my gear in case you're curious how I display it. Although, why would you? It's more for my benefit. In case I ever screw it up and then I go, oh look, I had a video where I could remember exactly where I put them. Um, just to quick. Just before I do do the paracesis, though, let's just get... Yeah. Those are the names of my kit guns. They're named after stars. Although, actually, they're named from uh, Ivalice Final Fantasy series, because... It's very hard to find a naming convention you're happy with. And as it comes up on the Zors, you'll see that I used a lot of stuff from Evil East and Final Fantasy XI, which I touched on in my youth. Evil East tends to have a lot of weapon classes, which kind of mesh quite nicely. Although you have to take some liberty with it, because certain weapons that say they're, for example, a greatsword, like this, is very clearly a scythe. So we use scythe names instead. But I'm happy with my naming convention. Uh, I should mention the reason I'm doing this, not the Zors, I just wanted to show off my names, is because kit guns, mowers, and... What are they called? K-drives do not sh currently show in the arsenal, which means I'm going to show them here. So, I have all the pets. There's my naming convention for the mowers, which are based on their pieces, which is exactly how I name my amps. Quite a long time to figure out a name for those. I hope the brackets don't screw up my naming convention, but then again, at the same time, there's nothing wrong with having multiple land wrist rooks, for example, and I can just click on them and see which bracket it has. So, probably won't bother me. It'll bother me a little. Loadouts. I have some loadouts. They're not really specialised. The only real specialised are Evara for Orb Thalys Conservations and Mesa for murdering things. She's nice when you are so tired you can't even aim properly and you just pop four. She does not need a prime. Her prime is coming out in a few days. She's already ridiculously broken. I'm not sure why she needs a buff. Because she will get a tiny buff. And if I hadn't been done with this challenge, I would probably have appreciated her extra polarities, but... Whatever. Um, let's quickly go on to vehicles. Once again, no former used, because I forgot to do this. No former used. And this is it. Yeah, that's the entire page. Former used and K drives. No former used because you know why would I? See, you really. 
I mean, this hardly is the best example, but you don't really need a uh, former in weapon, weapons or equipment. Yeah, you're not as strong, but Warframe isn't that strong a uh, hard a game. It doesn't really have end game content. I'd like the raids back eventually. I mean, look at the Paracesis. It's a very decent build. As you can tell, it's made for having condition overload on it, which doesn't fit. That'll probably take over Gladiator Vice. But considering I'm about to former it, that would be the perfect time. Although it won't fit anyway, so. It'll need multiple former, but it needs at least five anyway. I think I'm done. So, I think the only thing left to do... Just make sure my video is still recording. Is to perform it. And the challenge should pop up. So, here you go. God, this is weird. Four and a half months. Polarize this. Steve achievement popped. Done. I am going to enjoy being able to use all my my over fifty form, which is isn't that much. I will run out of that very quickly, but I am going to be like a kid at the toy store. I think the only thing I can say now is to give a few tips if you want to do something similar, or just general tips. So, you do not need to buy plan this game. Ribbons are a waste of money, so don't buy them. And anything else is very achievable by just finding mods that people want and selling them. I mean, you can sell... I don't tend to sell prime parts, but I do sell them as sets, because for some reason people pay more for sets. I imagine that's because of limited trading, but... You really do not need to buy plat in this game. I've heard people say it's pay to win. It really isn't. It hurts early game, and then it just disappears, which is the exact opposite of how pay to win works. They usually lure you in by saying, you can do everything, and then they put paywalls everywhere. This game is the exact opposite. I've never felt like I needed New to actually... New alert marked on navigation, no. Thank you, Rev. I've never felt like I actually needed to spend money. I probably will after this. I mean, I've got to give... This game deserves money. I will probably give them money as soon as I get a plat discount, which I currently have, but it's 20%, and that's nowhere near enough, sorry. Don't use plat for rushing things, you can wait. It, it's a really hard thing to teach yourself to do, and I'm a very impatient person, but you do not need to rush any item in this game with plat. There is literally no point. Just wait. Turn the game off, go play something else, or watch something else. I know there's peer pressure involved, you know, oh, you have that cool thing, I want that cool thing, but you'll get the cool thing in at maximum three days if it's a, f if it's a frame. And by that point, did the three days really matter? I'd rather be spending that plat on, I don't know, cosmetics, because it's the only thing left. I have enough slots to have everything, although as the lofty goal of having every single combination absorbed, but that's going to take years, isn't in the scope of this challenge, and I'll probably lose my sanity by then. Plus I'd need another Plague Star. Um, don't buy anything with Plat until you know how the economy works, because I've seen people start the game, immediately get, I don't know, Limbo Prime because he seems exceedingly common, although that is just because we have the Prime Vault. But the problem with that is, when you actually get to doing Void Fissures, you're going to get Limbo pieces without trying. And you're just going to think to yourself, I could have just waited. 
And yeah, there's the argument, yeah, but you wouldn't have had the time to play with it before you had it, but it really doesn't matter. This, this isn't a game where you need top-end equipment immediately. You can... I want to say, don't spend, like, use plat to buy anything until maybe, you know, you beat the star chart. Because by that point, you've got access to all of the grind spots. You can get all the mods that people want that aren't, they aren't willing to grind for. And you can use the wiki to support that and Warframe.Market and Trading Channel, etc. Like, early, early game, I got a lot of money by selling Continuity before Prime Continuity was available. Because... I used, well, I didn't have Limbo Prime at that point to nuke um, void maps, but just break containers. I sometimes got continuity or barrel diffusion or all of these mods that people are willing to pay for. And you can do spy missions, people will buy the dual stat mods. Of course there are arbitrations now, but that's a lot later on. People will spend money on those. K-Drive mods when you've got that maxed out. There are a lot of and Arkwing mods, because nobody wants to grind Arkwing, and I'm probably one of the only people in this game that actually likes Arkwing. I just wish there were more missions, it was more fleshed out. A lot of a lot of the people that say they hate Arkwing and say, oh it's too hard or it's too boring, never bothered to mod their stuff correctly. And I it's not their fault. The game does not give you enough time in Arkwing to ever think of that as an option. Every single planet has an Arcwing mission, and all you you just you just inwardly groan and go, "Okay, we're doing this now." A lot of those missions only have that one node for that mission. If it was more fleshed out, we'd probably enjoy it, which is why I'm hoping Railjack will solve that. I'll probably get on my ass and get kin kinetic diversion. Um. Obviously, if you want to follow my restrictions, this was fun. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of turmoil, internal turmoil here from having a schedule, like a, a consistent goal. But Warframe suffers from not really having a goal, so it really did help me get to this point. So if you want to follow my restrictions, go for it. I mean, I've just shown it's possible. I mean, I did, I feel like I did a good job. Four and a half months, I added extra restrictions on it, so it's very easy to do that in less time. Like, not buying with plat, no rushing, etc. You don't need to do that, but it is possible. But for the normal player, don't follow these restrictions. You don't need to. It did cause some discomfort, let's say. You can get through the majority of this game very easily, with a lot of fun, with using former. If you like a challenge, don't use the former. The, ga the game doesn't have end game content. Using former is, is the same reason I dislike ribbons. It's power for a challenge that doesn't exist. You are just overpowered. You're overpowered in this game anyway. I mean, look at this build. This build, will, this build isn't even the best build in the world, and it will shred most things just be invincible with Rhino, invincible with Inaros, invincible kind of with Neza, since it's rework. Or you can just go invisible with Loki and just slash the people and they can't see you. It, this isn't a hard game. It's a challenging game. I wish there was more content to challenge me. I never really felt like I needed to form her. And now that I've done it, maybe I'll form her uh, I don't know, Kuva siphons. I mean, I may hate ribbons, but people do spend a lot of money trying to buy them off me, so... That seems to be the only point of ribbons, actually, is just to crash the plat market. So, I'm rambling a little. Rambling. So, I'll just finish off by saying what I plan to do now that I've done all this, because I haven't beaten the game. I mean, this isn't really a game you can beat, but there is still stuff I can do. I mean, there are Eidolons. Maybe I'll learn to love them, but I doubt it. I'd rather Fortuna 2, Part 2, fixes everything that I hate about Eidolons. Because Arcanes used to come from 
um, raids. That's why everybody has arcanes, because they didn't grind the Eidolons for them. People grind Eidolons now to sell those arcanes for plat. That's kind of where that that no mistakes mentality comes for because comes from because they want seven runs per night because otherwise it's cutting into profits and that's that's a really nasty way to think. Anyway, uh, obviously, Endo hasn't been the focus. Yeah. Um, I could probably do the node on Zedna or the arbitrations now. And having former will help with that. It's why it was never the focus. I always felt like I wasn't going to do as good a job without former to get Endo. Only because it slowed the process down, not because it wasn't possible. Obviously there is focus. Now with more... Um, time time to actually focus on focus, I can use some frames that haven't been available to me because certain builds need former. I cannot do those builds, which haven't really been nece necessary for general play, but for very specialized things like focus grinding, you want efficiency, and I can't do that. I can now. I can get the mods I'm missing. There are going to be mods added to the game all the time. I can get stuff from Barrow. I I think since his third visit, I have basically gotten every single thing from him that I can. Which has been torture, honestly. Trying to get that many ducats is ugh, just for cosmetics. But I like ev having everything. And DE knows that. That's why they keep releasing cosmetics. I'll get all the syndicates done, eventually. I mean, I have to swap over the three to get the sigils and things that are exclusive to that side, and the shindanas and things, so... That won't be hard, it's just not... It's just not somewhere I felt like I could put my time is doing syndicate missions constantly. It'll be... I honestly think it'll be quite easier if I just do a few hours per day. And obviously the end game of Warframe or at least the one that fills the gap is cosmetics I will be able to use my plat that isn't being used on prime pieces or mods I can't be asked to grind for by that's why I love this economy the in-game co economy I'm happy to do spy missions, they're probably my favourite game type in the entire game and I will sell those mods to get mods from game types I don't feel like grinding it's actually really good I think that's about it. I did a thing. This is mainly here as kind of a snapshot of my time with this game. A little bit of bragging, I suppose. I've done a lot in four and a half months. And I really did enjoy this game. It's a lot different from 2014. And I had I'm glad I gave it another shot. And I can only see good things coming from this game. So, yeah, bye. Have fun.